Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another tutorial and review about the Panasonic TZ91 or ZS80. That's how the camera is called in the United States of America. It's a pretty compact camera with an electronic viewfinder, a flippy display for all the vloggings you need, except that you can't attach an external microphone to the camera. However, it's so compact and it has a large zoom. It's equipped with Wi-Fi and let's see what this camera is able to do in a real world environment. Enjoy this review. If you have any further questions, please make sure to post a comment below and you will find tons of photos we took during this review. Also the video files in the description below. So as all the accessories we used to do this review. So enjoy these couple minutes and as usual, thanks for watching. The Panasonic ZS80 or TZ91 is available for about 350 bucks in two different colors. This camera is made to zoom in for selfie friends and for people who need 4K video and a high burst rate. The body feels great, fits into most hands, I would say, but is too big for someone's pocket. With 320 grams, it's a pretty lightweight camera with such a big zoom. The sensor has a resolution of 20 megapixels, which is enough for printouts, Facebook and Instagram posts. On top is a mode dial with the zoom switch and the shutter release button next to it. At the lower side, you will find a tripod mount with a battery and memory compartment. I put my favorite memory card in the video description below. You can charge the camera via micro USB using the included adapter or a power bank. Via micro HDMI you will be able to review your files on your TV with your family. The battery life is okay. With its 1025 mAh you can take up to 320 photos or about 30 minutes of video. The higher the resolution the quicker you will dampen the battery. The image stabilizer did a really good job, especially during video recording. I can recommend getting a tripod for steady shots. It also does a fantastic job during the night for long time exposures out of your hands. Let's speak about usability very quick. All Panasonic cameras are using the same menu, so it's easy to find things. Via the touch display you scroll through your photos and videos, make adjustments in the menu or zoom in into your photos. It's easy for someone who is starting with Panasonic and for people who come from a different Panasonic camera. Via the upper mode dial you can easily switch between photo, video and a panorama mode. What makes this camera so great for traveling is first and foremost the large zoom and the speed. In just under two seconds the camera is ready for use and you can start straight away. I personally like it a lot when manufacturers put an electronic viewfinder in a compact camera. It's more intuitive and better when the sun is shining to avoid any annoying reflections on your camera screen. The electronic viewfinder has a resolution of 1.16 million dots and the only thing which was a bit annoying is that it's just too tiny to look through. In my point of view it needs to be bigger to make it easier for the eyes to look through it. Unfortunately there are two disadvantages which makes this camera not an ideal camera for vlogging. First the missing hot shoe to attach an external microphone and secondly the missing port to connect an external microphone. Considering that this camera is mainly for taking great travel photos, it will work for recording a small vlog. If it's not too windy, the audio quality is good as long as you don't have any annoying background noises. The 7.5cm or 3 inch LCD touch display allows you to take great selfies and share them using the internal Wi-Fi interface. You can use the Panasonic image app to transfer photos and videos straight onto your phone and to share them with friends using WhatsApp, Instagram or Dropbox. You can also control the camera using your Android and iOS device. One thing which drives me crazy is that the record button is next to the on and off button. So by mistake you 
hit that on and off button more often than the record button which is like super annoying if you want to record a video and at this moment you just shut off the camera that's super annoying the tracking of this camera is amazing as long as it's daytime during hours of darkness you might notice a lack in focus speed I think the focus was slightly faster on the Panasonic than using the Canon PowerShot G7X Mark II, which has a microphone port. Make sure not to vlog during a hurricane or in the rain and you will be happy with the performance of the internal microphone. Here are some extra photos we took using the Panasonic camera. You can take up to 10 photos a second in full resolution. If you need more frames, step into the 4K photo feature, which is accessible with a dedicated button. This allows you to take 30 4K photos a second for 15 minutes. A fast riding memory card is essential. The one we used is listed in the video description below. True story, we are on top of the Skyline Plaza, it's called Skyline Garden. And we just figured out that this camera has one of the best panorama modes we've ever seen. Then we went on to the roof garden of the Skyline Plaza at the fair in Frankfurt to get some macro shots. If you use the wide angle you can get as close as 3 cm to your subjects. Once you zoom in to use the telephoto lens you may need to step back 7 feet from your flowers to get the camera find its focus. To use the telephoto lens you may need to step back 7 feet from your flowers to let the camera find its focus. The better you understand the principle of photography the better your results will be. We made it easy and shot all of these photos in the automatic mode. Look at all these details. A great camera for Instagram and traveling. Lot of zoom, great macro mode and just one compact camera. Nice! Next location for this review is the one and only Frankfurt Airport. Lots of great planes and wind. Here you can clearly see how much the integrated image stabilizer supports you for taking videos and long time exposures during the night. Don't overstate the long time exposures. Great camera for these kind of shots, lots of zoom for plane spotters. But how much zoom do you really get? Well, a lot. 30x optical zoom, which is a 24 to 720 millimeter equivalent. A downside of this huge focal length range is the aperture. The more you zoom in, the more light you will lose. If you take your photos and videos using the wide angle, you can get more light onto your camera sensor. However, the camera tries to get the best results if you want to isolate the four from the background and vice versa using the portrait mode. The more you know about the principles of photography, the better your results will be. There will be a video about photography from A to Z on my channel. Once you watch this video, you will be able to control this camera using the manual mode and all the other cameras out there as well. Well, that's the end. Thank you so much Panasonic for making this video possible and to all of you who supported me. I like all compact Panasonic cameras since they give you everything what you need to take great photos and videos for low budget without making any compromises. For 350 bucks you get a decent travel camera with 4K video, time lapse and slow motion video. The only thing I really miss is a port to attach an external microphone for my video blogs. The autofocus does a great job during daytime and lags a bit during the night. Pros for this camera are its great image quality, sharp videos and photos. You get a great zoom lens in such a compact format without carrying all the big lenses with you. Make sure to get a spare battery or fully charged power bank. I will provide you with lots of sample images and also low light shots in the video description below. Make sure to scroll down, all links to the gear we used is also listed in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you soon, all the best from Frankfurt.